Let's kick things off in Congress, where today Republicans were once again trying to pick a new speaker after Kevin McCarthy was kicked out and Steve Scalise failed and Jim Jordan also failed. And then today they nominated some poor bastard named Tom Emmerich. And this dude was their nominee for four hours. <laughs> and then he dropped out. <laughs> Martin Scorsese is out here making movies that last longer than speaker candidates. <laughs> If you saw it this afternoon, you missed this dude's entire nomination. And personally, I was disappointed. I was looking forward to Tom Ermer being speaker because my man has one of the illest Zoom games of all time. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I moved to strike the last word, obviously. Today's gig economy sprung out from the uh, last recession. It offers a job to anyone who wants it. During COVID-19, we must make sure that our nation's sole proprietors and the smallest of small businesses receive timely... Will the gentleman suspend? I'm sorry, Mr. Emmer? Yes. Are you okay? <laughs> Yo, does he look okay? Listen, I've seriously never seen anyone look less okay in my life. Like, how does that even happen? Was the laptop upside down? Was he upside down? Like, we all use Zoom. That's not even an option in Zoom. <laughs> he had to code that himself. Like, we've been using Zoom for over three years. I've never seen anyone do anything close to this. Like, I get embarrassed if I'm muted on Zoom. This guy's in a whole different dimension. <laughs> Still, he would've made a great speaker. Just as long as Congress never had to attach a PDF to an email. <laughs> but let's move on to our next story. It's a little dark. Honestly, it might be a little too dark for me to talk about. But you know who can talk about it? My alter ego, my alter ego, Dark Jesus. <laughs> we have a special effects budget, clearly. <laughs> Let's talk about airplanes. You know how on the airplane they got that big door to the cockpit and they keep it locked tight so no one can get in? They don't want anyone in there to try to grab the controls, right? So they keep the door locked and that works. Unless the guy that wants to crash the plane is already in the cockpit. And that's what happened here. This morning, the off-duty pilot accused of trying to take down a passenger plane heading to court to face more than 100 charges, including 83 counts of attempted murder. 44-year-old Joseph Emerson allegedly trying to crash an Alaska Airlines flight from Everett, Washington to San Francisco on Sunday with 84 people on board. We've got the uh, guy that tried to shut the engines down uh, out of the cockpit. Emerson sitting in the jump seat of the Embraer E-175 cockpit, situated right behind this instrument console between the captain and co-pilot. According to a federal official, he allegedly tried to pull the engine fire extinguisher handles located right here before being subdued by the flight crew. Hold on, wait. <laughs> Why is there a handle that crashes a plane? Like, <laughs> who asked for that? And then also, why did the news very explicitly show us where this handle is? <laughs> they were like, he pulled this lever. No, not that one, that one over there. The big one on the left. You have to pull it hard, though. And in order to get in the cockpit, use code 2713. That works for all planes. <laughs> all right, but listen, it's time for some financial news. The Daily Show is a serious show. I know some people expect me to come on here and do my thing where I just roast people but I, that I have beef with, but this is a serious show. This is a serious chair, serious desk, and now I'm gonna give you some important financial news. So important, I have to put on my spectacles. <laughs> I report on the serious financial news. Popular radio host DJ Envy now distancing himself from an alleged multi-million dollar fraud scheme. Not DJ Envious. <laughs> was never on my radar. Go on. Federal agents arresting his longtime friend and one-time business partner, Cesar Pena, on charges of wire fraud, accusing him of a Ponzi-like real estate scheme that allegedly defrauded investors out of millions. Pena often appeared on The Breakfast Club, a top 20 iHeartRadio show with millions of listeners and YouTube subscribers to promote real estate investment. He also held seminars and created YouTube videos with DJ Envy. DJ Envy has not been charged in connection with the case, but many of the alleged victims say they were were influenced by his celebrity status. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> wow, DJ Envy is in trouble for real estate fraud. What a serious story. It's definitely not funny. There's certainly nothing personal that makes it funny to me. It's not like Rashawn accosted me on the radio for making a little joke about him and his wife, which I only thought we were friends. It's not like he called me dickhead and then got so mad he locked himself in the studio for the rest of the show and then told the building security I was a threat. But even if that happened, that's all in the past. <laughs> I'm just reading the news. 
Ich muss sehen. And apparently the news is DJ Envy might go to jail for an alleged Ponzi scheme flipping houses in New Jersey. That's not hilarious. It's tragic because he's just a DJ. I mean, there's no way he could have known he might have been involved in a Ponzi scheme, right? When I first got into real estate, I called three people. I called Clue. Mm -hmm. I called Fabulous. Mm -hmm. I called Joe Button. Joe Button told me it was a Ponzi scheme and I was going to go to jail. That clip is not funny. We are not laughing at this. We're also not asking who's the dickhead now. I'm being serious. Look at these spectacles. This could have happened to anybody. Whenever I'm doing financial transactions, I also get advice from Joe Button, Fabulous, and DJ Clue. Everybody knows those are the Lehman Brothers of hip-hop. And look, I don't want Envy to go to prison. I mean, imagine getting locked up for one of the corniest crimes in hip-hop history. This is a Property Brothers-ass crime. Forget the Bloods, he's gonna have to join the House Hunters. But again, I'm just doing the news, and the news is that DJ Envy is a DJ, a man who turns tables. And now, the tables have turned. <laughs> this alleged crime. Let's go to one of these alleged properties with Dulce Sloan. Dulce, sorry. Dulce, Dulce, you gotta feel sorry for these people that lost all that money. <laughs> no, I don't. Listen, I feel bad for ugly people. I feel bad for orphans who can't sing. <laughs> but these people gave their money to a DJ. You can't trust a DJ with money. You can barely trust a DJ to DJ. <laughs> he should be flipping records, not houses. And I should know. I went on a date with a DJ because <laughs> who hasn't? And he gave me the check. And I asked if he was going to pay. And he said, sorry, I don't take requests. <laughs> I hear you. People got to keep their money where it's safe, like banks and other investments. What? No! Wall Street is going to mess your money up worse than anybody. Bank of America, stealing money. Silicon Valley Bank, collapse. Golden Sachs, guess what their CEO does on the side? He's a <laughs> DJ! <laughs> Good Lord. No, you can't trust Wall Street. They screw you over and it's legal. So what am I supposed to do with my money then? easy, friend. You leave your money at the Bank of Dulce. <laughs> or El Banco de Dulce, sponsored by Telemundo. <laughs> Listen, I'll offer you a safe place for any of your financial deposits. Okay, well, what interest rates are you offering? What are you oh, no, 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 there's none of that. I'm gonna keep it under my mattress, just like my grandma, who's also our head of security, 100% safe. <laughs> and you're not gonna spend my money, right? I'm gonna spend some of your money. <laughs> because I'm taking on all the risk. What risk? What you mean? I'm putting a bank in my house. It's risky as hell. <laughs> so maybe you'll lose a little bit, but not as much as you'd lose with DJ Envy. <laughs> Come on, money under your mattress? Do you even have FDIC insurance? Oh, trust me. I F some DIC on that mattress all the time. <laughs> Let me think about it. Don't say so, everybody.